Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Okay, today's uh, video is not so much a how-to video, although I give you tons of tips and tricks. It's more a video to show you how far you could take your picture. And what I did is I received a finished picture from one of my followers, and she asked if she could make any improvements and I, I looked at it and I said, oh yeah, <laughs> let's go for this one. So she was very nice about letting me use her picture. She's new. This is to improve her coloring. And for everybody to see, when you think you're done, you just might not be done. So let's see what I did. So this is the picture that I was sent. And... This woman wanted me, she requested that I uh, make some improvements. What could she do? And she wanted to show it to me. And she had followed my skin tutorial, and I think she did an excellent job with that. Um, you can definitely see the highlights right in, right here. You could see the highlights going over here. Um, she's trying to contour, going around the face for the heart. She She did it. She asked me about the leaves. I guess she didn't like the way the leaves looked and if she, what to do with the flowers because she didn't think that they, you know, were up to par either. And there's, there's a few things that she could do and she could still do. And what I would consider this is a little bit underdone, which is probably the most common thing a new person um, does is they underdo their picture. They don't overdo it. So let's just take a look at what I'm going to do as far as uh, doing this picture using her color scheme. Now, mine, of course, is going to be a little bit more vibrant. And I'm adding in some pink. And what I'm seeing, because the nectar is a little bit dark, I want to really give it a little punch. I'm going to add in a hotter color. And let's go with hot pink. And in the areas that she made very bright, you know, very bright, is where I'm going to add a layer of the hot pink, just to bring it out even more. And to change it a bit, on the inside of the flower, I'm going to go with the lavender. And that's going to give it a little bit more of a bluer tinge. And a better color gradient. Okay, I'm satisfied with that flower and I'm going to continue doing the other petals in the same way. I changed the pencil over to some French gray and why I chose French is because there's so much green in this that I need something to make it pop a little bit more and you're going to use your French grays with your greens because the French grays go with nature colors. The last thing I'm going to do to it is I'm going to use my white pencil and I'm going to blend it all up. It's going to also add a little light to the middle. Of course, this flower isn't finished. I need to add some of the other colors going around it to, to get more of a tone feel on how dark I'm going to take the flower. Better to leave it light than dark. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat the process for all of the flowers. So when I come back, all of these flowers will be finished. Before I start doing more lesson, I don't usually show this angle. There's my little monster. He just sits up there, mellow, watching me, looking around. Okay, we're going to be working on the leaves, and obviously I've done quite a few of them. My color scheme for the leaves, I changed hers, and I'm going to be working with spring green, white, dark green, lime peel, 
canary yellow, and spring green. Oh, I'm sorry, apple green. I've done the leaves two different ways. I did them with a base of the dark green on some of them. And then, if you notice over here, I've started with a, a lighter uh, apple green as the base. Doing it in the same way, but the darker being underneath and the lighter being underneath. So that it's going to give me two different tones, even though I'm using the same pencils. I'm going to get two different looks out of the leaf. What this accomplishes is bringing the leaves out and making them look individual because not all leaves, even on the same tree, will look the same. Younger leaves will be brighter green than older leaves. So I put an undertone of the apple green and now I'm going to just shade it in with the darker. I did it the same way for all of these. So when I started with the light, I put the dark over it. And when I started with the dark, I put the light over it. And this is an excellent way of getting dimension out of your picture. And now I left a little bit open to put darker underneath, more variation in tone. And I'm, when I'm happy with what it looks like, I go in with my canary yellow. And I put a highlight in it, but I'm not done. Because that's way too much highlight. Now I'm going to take my spring green and I'm going to just tone it down. So this is a very easy leaf to do. And it packs a pop when they're all mixed together. And if I get that too dark and I want to lighten it up, just in a couple of spots, all I have to do is add in as the top color being the canary yellow. You can also, instead of the spring green on top, you can use the lime peel. So I left myself um, a lot of options open. And I'll do one more for you, and then I'll finish up the leaves myself. Because I'm really just repeating the process over and over again. I'm going to start the headpiece, and I'm going to do it in goldenrod, sienna brown, and dark umber.
last part of this tutorial is going to be the face. My student used my method and my recipe for skin tone that I used in my skin contouring video. I've added in a couple of other pencils and we'll just review them. I added in Sap Green Light and this is going to be for eyeshadow. Blush Pink, that's going to be part of the lips which I started working on and for the cheeks. That would match up with the flowers. Peach Beige, Cream, Pink, and that's a supplementary color to the blush pink. White, Slate Gray, which I'm on the fence about using, but I just chose it anyway as a choice. Black, Kelp Green, which will also be for the eyes. Peach, a light peach, and that's for the skin. Indigo Blue, that's going to be for shadowing. Uh, peach uh, is in here because I couldn't find my another pencil, so I grabbed Peach. I probably won't be using this. Burnt Okra is going to be the contour. Nectar. We've got um, Chartreuse, yellow Chartreuse, which will also be for the eyes. And I took a warm gray. So let's see what I could do with it. I'm going to be following the same directions as I used when I did the contouring tutorial until I get to the upper layers and then I'm going to use some of these other colors.
this point of the picture, I'm doing final details. I'm picking up pencils that may only need a teeny drop here and a teeny drop there. And unfortunately, I can't really teach that to you on a beginning level. You just know where a pencil goes. Like I'm using chocolate now on the inside of the flower. And I'm going to use a little bit of orange in there. Just to color it up. You know, I, I did this picture basically to show what a finished picture would look like versus when you give up too soon. My student's picture can look like this if she keeps going. And that was the point of this is don't stop. Keep keep going and surprise yourself. Overdo your pictures when you when you think it's time to stop, do another layer and your pictures will start to look more and more real. And this just picks up a little bit of light every here and there. And what's great about Pasca is it comes off if you want it to come off. Stays on if you want it to stay on. So any way you decide you don't like something that you did with Pasca, just take it off. See, I'm trying out a little highlight on the stems now. And if I don't like the way it looks, no big deal. Most of the time, if something doesn't look good, I just end up changing it. There's always a way of changing it. And then maybe I'm going to go in with my black pencil. You see, this is, since I've used virtually hardly any black in this picture, I have a lot of room for it. I was on one of my followers is named Clara. I'll leave her URL in the in the comments section. I had a really good time on her hangout the other day. Um she's still learning, but she's really sweet and she had some really nice people in there. I like going on other people's hangouts more than doing them on my own because there's so much responsibility in doing that so i give her a lot of credit and she did such a beautiful job on the picture that she was working on even though she was talking and chatting i have trouble with that i guess doing two things at once i'm using sepia by the way if anybody's curious. At this point, I'm just picking up pencils. No rhyme or reason. Just kind of by instinct, I know what goes where. And what I need. I had originally, if, if anybody noticed in this, I had taken the bullhorn thing, the bull ring, out of her nose with some sepia earlier. And then it didn't cover well what I what I wanted. I I don't like bull rings in in women's noses. I don't mind them in men's, but I don't like them in women. That's the one thing about this picture I wish it didn't have. And where they put that little black line in, <laughs> that's the artist, not me. See if I can get rid of it. I'm using the Pasca a little bit wet so that it spreads out and it doesn't form that hard line. That's a little better. 
I'm going very, very gently on this because I like her nose. And a couple of swipes in the wrong direction. Like that and that is part of the ink on the paper. So those are bothering me too. That's the drawbacks of using somebody else's artwork. You know, it's not that it's wrong, but it's may not be where you put it. So in the finished product, it looks a little funny. And I'm not darkening in these dots on her face. I don't particularly like them. I don't like facial tattoos. Let's see if I can get rid of those. Okay, so I'm pretty much done with this picture. I did the final skin blend, which I should have mentioned that I was doing before. There was a brown mark over here, and I knew about it, and I just hadn't taken it, you know, blended it out yet. But I'm pretty happy with this picture, and I want to thank my student very much for allowing me to do this video using her picture. She's a real trooper. And this is the lesson for today. Every beginner has trouble judging whether their picture is finished or it's not finished. Most people think their picture is done when you still have a lot more to go. Keep going. Go, go, go. Keep going until you can't go any further on the picture. Put it down and go some more. And you'll see your pictures will start to come alive. It's very hard to get photo uh, realistic on a coloring book just because of the structure uh, of the coloring book. The black lines you're kind of forced into. But you could take it as close as you can. And I know you'll be happy with it. So I will see you guys in my next video. And take care. Happy coloring. Bye-bye.